You know, Jay, a lot of people, when, you know, the App Store was announced, the SDK was announced, they said, okay, well, that's the end of jailbreaking. That's the end of the reason for wanting to jailbreak. There's going to be a, a, an official way to install software. What, uh, you know, what has changed or what uh, has continued the jailbreaking community along after Apple opened it up and essentially created the ability for people to write applications and put them onto the, onto the phone? Well, so... The big thing about the App Store is that it, you really only have applications, and that's something that many people don't realize is a is a core limitation. I mean, an application is something; it has an icon, it opens, it closes, it's gone. What people are really interested in is the ability to change the entire experience, um, even when an application is not running, to change what you can see and what you can do, to have, to change the behavior of other applications. The things that you can find in Cydia really aren't apps. Um, people ask me all the time, "How many apps are in Cydia?" My official answer is now four. We have Groove Shark, <laughs> we have uh, GV Mobile. We've got a couple of these famous things you may have heard of that have ended up in in Cydia. But really, what Cydia is about are these seamless, pervasive extensions and modifications to the existing experience. So like, you know, on a computer, you can change your background, you can change the way that the layout is, you can change your fonts, all those things. Those things cannot be done on an iPhone unless you've jailbroken it. And so Cydia allows you to install all of those uh, plugins and extensions and those little programs that essentially allow you to make modifications to change all of those settings that you can't do by default. That is correct. What and can you break an iPad? Yes. You can. The same tool, actually, that jailbreaks an iPad is used to jailbreak the current uh, fleet of iPhones and iPods. Can you turn an iPad into a phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do not have that yet, and I'm not certain that's possible based on how the baseband works. Right. I mean, you look like an idiot, but uh, you're holding up your head. Oh, my goodness. So um, I understand that uh, there there may be an iPhone 4 jailbreak in the works. I know a lot of people that have gone from the 3GS to the iPhone 4 are just kind of clamoring for uh, you know the next uh, jailbreak. What's, uh, what's the story behind that? Yeah, well, so um, the uh, same person who did the work on jailbreaking the iPad and the current fleet of iPhones, um, his username is Comex, C-O-M-E-X, and frankly, that's all I know about him, except for that he's <laughs> a new 17-year-old whiz kid oh, wow. that is awesome at this. Um, he's been working on on the jailbreak for the iPhone 4 and there have been a couple uh, pictures floating around and uh, many of us in the core jailbreak community um, have jailbroken iPhone 4s and are working on getting all of our software up and running on it but it's not ready yet there's still bugs in the jailbreak it's a very finicky process and the result is less than ideal so, so as soon as we get all of that cleared up I'm certain everyone will have a jailbreak so, so several things that I want to ask there I've, I've seen you know um, links and messages online saying you know click here to get your iPhone uh, you know 4 jailbreak you know 29 bucks so you, you would recommend against those things for a lot of people out there. You certainly should not be spending any money to download software that has a jailbreak. Um, the jailbreak software has always been free. Now, if you have a friend who's going, or you know, a company that you find who's going to actually physically do the work on your phone, that might be worth it. Maybe you don't want to learn how to do that. But frankly, the software is so simple these days. It's a single program. You download it. You plug your phone in over USB. It's got one button. That's it. You click it. You try not to touch it. The only thing that can go wrong is if you touch it. And uh, 30 <laughs> seconds later, your phone's fully done. So uh, I think that what, what you guys are doing to jailbreak, every single jailbreak um, is essentially reversed when Apple releases their next software update. And of course, people that have jailbreak and phones need to be careful when they do their upgrades to make sure that there is a path to upgrade their, with their jailbreak. The next jailbreak is available. You guys are essentially taking advantage of a flaw in Apple software each time to exploit and be able to trick the operating system into letting your code get injected in there. How many more of these uh, of these flaws are out there? I mean, are you guys going to run out? Is Apple ever going to uh, to get the next step? I don't know. I mean, it's a very complicated system. There are a lot of moving parts. Um, and when it, I mean, not physically moving, but there's a lot of software in there. And um, we really only have to find one hole each time in order to be able to get in. So occasionally, I've even been the person saying, you know, we probably have another month. But I've learned to just avoid saying that. Um, I We're probably going to have a jailbreak of some variety for a very long time. And how many are in the jailbreak community? So if you say that as number of users, we're looking at on the order of 6 million, um, maybe, I, I never have an exact number, right. maybe a little more. Right. Um, the percentages that I hear are always around 8 to 9%. Um, these come from analytics providers like Pinch Analytics. They're in tens of thousands of App Store apps, and uh, they know how to determine if a phone is jailbroken or not, and they occasionally will release a press release. And, and how many people are actually working on the process, like you guys, that are able to create software to break a phone? Um, I want to say that there are uh, under 10 that are in the core community that are doing that. Is that, that right? Work. Wow. 
It's so is, is Apple able to determine if a phone is jailbroken? Is there any reporting that goes back once you install an application? If if an application itself can determine that there is a, a jailbreak on the phone, is Apple gathering this info? So I've never actually determined whether Apple's gathering that info or not. Um, but frankly, I believe that Apple knows if your phone is jailbroken. I, I would not get into an argument with Apple if they claimed your phone was jailbroken so, that they didn't know. So we're probably on some blacklist, and that's probably why Steve never replies to my emails. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, All my right. phone's still in jail, so I'm cool. I'm clean. Well, that's debatable. All <laughs> right, Jay, thank you so much for joining us. It's been quite a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, if Jay, thanks, man. I really appreciate well, it. Thank you very much for having me on your show. All right, you're listening to Make It Work with Jeremy Anticone, your source for a stress-free digital lifestyle. If you have a specific tech or gadget question for Jeremy, call us, 877-MAKE-IT-WORK. That's 877-625-3489. Or get in touch with us online. You can send your tweets to at Make It Work or your email to askjeremy at makeitwork.com. Coming up next, we're going to be going to the Make It Work inbox. Plus, we'll be answering some listener voicemails. All ahead on Make It Work with Jeremy Anticone. I hope that was okay. Hey, Jay, perfect. Thanks, man. Oh, well, thank you. That's awesome. I can't believe that, that new kid is 17 years old doing that. Yeah. Jesus well, it was, I mean, I mean, George Hotz was seventeen year old, uh, seventeen years old when he was doing it. So, Jesus, I was still trying to buy get people to buy me beer at seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Awesome.